Hello and welcome back everybody. Like it's been a while, right? It's been a minute since I published a video and I need to get back into it. I can actually have more free time to publish things now because I've left AWS, which is kind of crazy, right? I've been there for four years and now I'm doing my own thing. I'm consulting at the moment and it's fun to just build out client projects all the time. But in any case, in this video, I'm going to take it like back to the basics. And I want to talk about how you can build out a post confirmation trigger with Cognito and AWS Lambda. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to slide right over here. And this is what we have, right? Like we have a general UI. It has a protected page, right? Maybe a little login button over here. And essentially when you go over here to this slash protected route, this secondary page, you want to have the ability to sign up and by providing your name, email, password, and group, something like founder, developer, designer, et cetera, you can sign in, right? This is your sign up page. You can do all of that. What's cool about Cognito though, is that you can hook into different stages of that authentication process. Once you do that, a Lambda trigger is going to fire when a Lambda is attached to Cognito, it's called a trigger. So a Lambda function is going to get triggered. And specifically, we're going to set this to trigger after a user is confirmed. So at this point, when this Lambda function fires, we know that we have a user in our account. Awesome. What do we do with it? We're going to grab these details. And we're going to say, Hey, that group that you selected in the signup selection area, we're going to put you inside of that group. Reason why you want to do that is so that you can have authentication and authorization rules applied to that group. Super cool. It's a whole lot of explaining to say, Hey, like when you sign up, I can put you in a separate group, right? Now, what does this look like from like a full on application perspective? That's what we're going to be building in this video. So if you want to check out the full repo, I do have that here. Click and deploy. It's all there for you. And the blog post. I'll put that in the description as well. But in terms of the UI, this is what we have, right? I've been working with Daisy UI five since that launched recently. And you have a post confirmation trigger. It's a hero landing page, nothing too crazy. When you click on get started or when you click on login, it'll take you to that secondary route. And right now it just says, welcome somebody. You are a member and like super blank, right? Light mode, dark mode, pick your theme. And then yeah, from here, let me just show you what it looks like to put this all together. All right, so V and React router are what we're going to be using instead of here. So I have my nav bar, my components, my routes, and you can see it's just those two areas, right? The home page and that secondary page. First and foremost, let's just get Amplify set up. This is going to be a way for us to configure our backend. So we'll come up here. I'm going to do a quick little npm create Amplify. And if you notice our backend, like this is going to set up in our root directory, install those dependencies, and we should get an Amplify folder right up there. So we'll give that a second to deploy. Oh, that I didn't even have to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Amplify. And then we're not going to be using any kind of API. So like from the get go, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this folder. We have our auth resource. And as a lot of it comes with Cognito already set up with the ability to log in with email, which is great. But we want to, we want to take this a step further, right? Like I was saying, we want to add a couple of groups. The first group is going to be, I think it's just an array, right? So admin member, et cetera. Let's actually just get founder, developer, designer, and marketer. That looks good. Got cursor doing some work inside of here. Now, in terms of the user attributes, we're going to automatically get email, right? That's going to be essentially the user's login ID. It's going to be their email. And then they've had to put in their password. We can take it a step further and say, I also want to capture your name, which is a cognito attribute. That's cool. But on the front end, we're going to have them put in their name. And then we also want them to specify a certain category. And we'll just add in a drop down to do all of that stuff. So what we'll do is we'll say, Hey, the user attributes that I want is going to be full name. Like this is standard from Cognito. So it knows about this one required is going to be true. And how it works is that if Cognito knows about it, then you can make it required. Okay. But if you have something that Cognito doesn't know about, like custom group, not group, we'll call it like a category name, custom category name. Cognito doesn't know anything about a category name, right? It doesn't exist. So there is no way to say that this is required. You can see it's not even popping up. What you can do though, is say the data type is going to be a string. So now like you're defining this custom category and it's, yeah, it needs to be a capital string. And can you change it? I can't make it required, but I can say, Hey, when you set it, is it going to be something you can change or not? And in our case, yeah, it makes sense that you can change it. We're not going to do that in this app, but that's what you can do. Okay, cool. This is enough to have our Cognito user pool set up to take in those users. Let's keep it going from here though, because the next step is to create a function, a Lambda function that we can assign as a trigger. 
Now in Amplify, the way that you do it is you just define functions slash, I'm going to say add user to group that. And then this is going to be in the file. It's the resource.ts, right? The convention doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that when I paste this in, is that I call it add user to group, that's all fine, but it's super important that you specify the auth category. You can see that this is an enum, right? I have auth data and storage. So I'm gonna specify the auth category. That means that it gets deployed with my auth resource, my Cognito user pool. In case you wanna update this, I think the one that I always do is update this to be the runtime and it's 22, right? And this is also an enum value, but anyways, we have that going on. This is just defining our Lambda function. Let's go ahead and add in some logic. So we're gonna create that main.ts, as you can see right here on line six, right? We call it main.ts. Nothing too crazy going on over here. What I'm gonna do is just say, hey, I have a Lambda function, this post confirmation trigger. It takes an event. The event is of type post confirmation trigger handler. And essentially I wanna grab the group name. So this has everything based off of this event or this user that just logged in, right? So quest dot and then we have user attributes and then inside of here you have everything that whoop, everything that is on this user cool and then it's just a simple api call right back to cognito now note what we have to do here right this is a lambda function being triggered by cognito but inside of it we're calling an api from cognito those are two separate things going on and we have to make sure we cover that back in our auth resource but the way that we do that is actually pretty simple so i'm going to say hey here is our auth resource, you're not the auth resource, you are. And we can come down here and say, I have the triggers and it's an object, we have post confirmation. And then we like give it the function, right? We called this one, what was it? Add user, that's a group, there we go. That's great, like that attaches it to be the trigger, right? Nothing too complicated there. But remember, we're allowing it, we need to give it permission to call the add user to group like function, right? So access, there we go, there we go. Okay, access allows the function and we need to allow you to do like a, an array of things. So I'm gonna allow the resource. The resource is gonna be that same function and two. That's what I love about TypeScript, right? I'm just like typing stuff in. And here are all the things that I can allow it to do, right? Giving it permissions. Add a user to group sounds great. This is gonna give it that IAM policy on my behalf. Awesome, so I have that in place. And I think that is it. I think the last thing to do over here, we're not using data anymore, but let's just swap this out for add user to group that function. I just want to make sure like it did actually name it that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have all of this in place and that's it for our back end. I can't think of anything else. So let's work on the front end and to kick things off, we need to bring in the Amplify UI library or rather the, uh, the front end components, right? When we did NPM create Amplify, it brought in our backend directory, which installed Amplify and all that good stuff. But we still need the libraries, Amplify, React, cool. And that'll go ahead and get those installed. So now we get the cool like with Authenticator and all the other stuff. You'll see in case you haven't seen it before. Now over here, let's configure Amplify, right? I'm gonna do a new pattern that I've been liking a lot in my applications. Configure Amplify, TSX. I have a little shortcut, there we go. And then inside of here, now I'll do like my import for Amplify, I'm gonna bring in the component or rather the, the config file that isn't generated just yet. And you can see down here, I'm gonna configure Amplify like, just like normal in any Amplify project. And I'm gonna return null. This is a component, but it, all it does is really set up Amplify. Cool. To get rid of that error, let's just go ahead and deploy this. So I'm gonna say MPX, AMPX sandbox, and then pass in the profile since I'm using SSO. Great, this is going to deploy our backend. So we have that set up. Now over in our front end, let's go back to that main file. And inside of here, now we can just say, hey, here is Amplify. Let's just have you configured. Import that component, looking good. I'm probably gonna do that at the top. It doesn't rely on anything else. Cool. So we have that in place, right? Now, here's the thing. If we go to our secondary page component, because the home page doesn't need anything, it just links to this private page. If we go to the secondary page, what has happened? We have welcome and we have like, you are a member, right? My autocomplete is going crazy over here. We effectively want to protect this page, right? Now, another convention that I've been adopting with React Router in particular is the aspect of just like composing my authentication piece and having a separate component that handles the authentication. 
So I'm actually going to create a separate protect page and we'll come over here. We'll say source components. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and just, just paste this in for you. Again, the repo has all this stuff and we're not doing anything too crazy. The component is called protect, right? We are going to create an object that has form fields. Now this object, all it really does is say, Hey, which part of the authentication process are you trying to adjust? And I'm going to say, I have a name and I want the label to be full name and I want the order to be negative one. Now by default, when somebody signs into our application, this is, let me, let me just show you what I mean. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this form fields altogether. And you'll see like how this is adjusting things. So let's come over here. Great. The part that I do want to leave in is the fact that we're bringing in all the form fields and we're adding in a separate category, right? This is just a drop down, and this is going to have founder, developer, designer, marketer. And the important part is that we have custom category name. Keep in mind that when we are in Amplify, we go over to this resource, we have custom category name. Those two have to match, right? That's how we make the connection. So let's save this up. Here is our component. I'm going to head back over to our main.ts file and tie this in together. So we're going to be here, wrong one. Let's go here and we can effectively like wrap this component inside of protect. So we'll say, I want to protect like that, paste in our component. And it's like, cool. Any component that we ever want to protect, we just wrap it inside of this, right? You can pass it in as a prop if you want it to be really cool. Okay. So we have the ability to protect any page over here. We have our secondary page. And now that I refresh, if I come up, you can see our on the get started page, our home page, I click on this. And you can easily go to the page that you want, right? Let's verify this real quick. If I click on create account, see what's happening here. Like I get email, password, confirm password, and then you enter in your name and you have the ability to select a category. I actually want the name though, to be right at the top. And that's the form fields aspect that I was talking about. So I can come over here to whoops, come over here to protect, uncomment this. And because the email is the index zero. I want this to be negative one to just say always be at the top, right? That way, if I put in zero, it's going to be fighting with that email placeholder. So we'll come over here, select that. And just like that, if I refresh, it said name, but now it says full name. I adjusted the label. So let's go ahead and verify that this is working. Now, before I actually sign my user in, I want to go ahead and make one small adjustment. And that is over on our secondary page, right? This is pretty static content. I effectively want to take this and say, Hey, Instead of just showing this, I'm going to fetch the group information and that name information and display that. So it says, welcome the name. And then you are a member of whatever group you picked. All I'm going to do is just import a bunch of this stuff. So then we have this right up here and note that I'm using state, right? I'm keeping track of the name. I'm keeping track of the username and I'm going to come up here and say, fetch the auth session, right? So if you use like the, the use authenticator hook provided by Amplify, that doesn't give you all these details, right? It doesn't tell you what group you're in. We're going to inspect the actual token that we get back from Kinedo and we're going to pull off the groups and we're going to say, Hey, grab that group and just throw it in state, right? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull off the name of the user and this is required, but it doesn't know that. So we have to specify this as a string just like that. And we're going to update that in our state as well. Last thing to do is just say, Hey, welcome username. And then you're a member of group user group, just like that. Let's test this out and see what we get here. I'm going to do a quick little refresh, go to the home page. And we have get started and create the account. I'm going to say focus otter, throw in my email. Awesome. Password. Social security number is there. Password. And then I should have put like YouTuber in here, but let's go developer for today. Create the account. The user already exists. Let's go ahead and say like YouTube, right? Cool. Create the account. I'm going to get a code back. Let me show you what that code is. There we go. And then confirm. Right. In doing this, confirm the account. Welcome focus otter. You are a member of developer looking good. The only thing left to do is to fix this login button. There's actually nothing too crazy about that, right? We can use the use authenticator hook for that. And it's just a matter of saying over in the nav bar, we're going to bring in that authenticator. Great. We'll import that. And then now let's just use it. And it's pretty much just updating this. I think cursor could probably do this for us. Sign out. Cool. And let's see. We have both. I don't want, I don't want both in there. And I bet it will auto complete it for us. If I just turn this into a ternary and then yeah, there we go. So if we have a user do sign out, otherwise do log in. Now it says sign out. Now it says log in. Great. Sign in with the account MT Liendo plus YouTube. 
and then I can put in my password just like before. And there we go, sign up. Awesome, so the real value of this is the ability to have a user like tied to that Kaneido user group, right? So now we can perform those authorization rules that say if you're a developer, you can access this page. If you're a founder, you can access like the admin page, et cetera. And you can even tailor the experience based off of that. Now, if you're new and you're just getting started with AWS and you're wondering like, how do I even set up my account? How do I make sure that I have the right credentials and the right permissions set up for development? I have a free course that I'm going to be launching actually this week at the time of this recording. So be on the lookout for that. Share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends. So that way everybody can watch this content and get a better understanding of AWS together when it comes to building full stack apps. But with that said, my name is Michael Leando, AKA Focus Otter, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.